Hello. Today we're going to be covering what depression looks like in a black woman. The reason I think this is so important is because often what depression looks like in our community is not discussed. We often hear about vague depression symptoms, but I want to talk specifically about how they look in us as black women and how this shows up in our mind and body. So my name is Sonia Ross. I'm a somatic psychotherapist and my specialty is working with black women healing from depression, anxiety, and intergenerational trauma. There are many different things that show up in our body and mind, but these are three that I specialize in specifically. So what I do is help black women build a stronger emotional connection between their mind and their body so they can focus on their healing and recovery process. So this video was inspired today by the Nine Signs and Symptoms of Depression by Dr. Frida, and I will link to Dr. Frida's channel in the description below. In this video, she focuses on what depression looks like in black women, and she does it, actually, she doesn't focus on black women. She focuses on what depression looks like in general, but I wanted to bring in the perspective of what it looks like in black women and why I think this is so important. So I'm going to be covering six specific points and occasionally I'm going to glance down at my paper to make sure I'm covering everything as it should be covered. So one of the first things I want to cover is how depression is often an overlooked epidemic and that is silent in the black community. And this is for many, many reasons, but two of the ones I'm going to cover specifically are shame and stigma. Because of our experiences as black people, we our very existence is stigmatized. And so if our whole existence is stigmatized, then no one's really going to talk to us about what depression looks like. Are we depressed? Can we talk about our feelings of depression? Because our inherent existence within, especially the continental United States, is one that's met with so much stigma. If we have things that come up for us that make us feel, you know, vulnerable, scared, or that we're not at our optimal self, we really don't have the room and the space to discuss it. So this often leads us to hide from ourselves and hide from those who may care about us about what's going on with us as when it comes to our mood and our emotions. There's a lot of shame around being depressed in our community. And because our families have gotten a lot of old messages about our value and our worth as black people, they pass these on to us as adults, telling us that, you know, we need to be strong black women. We just need to push on and push through and that we don't need to you know, focus on those type of things. Many people have gotten those old messages and a lot of people wanna break out of those old messages, but they don't know where to turn or how to begin. So I just wanna encourage you know, black women, black people, you know, take care of yourself, begin to end shame and stigma around depression and anxiety or intergenerational trauma and begin to take care of yourself because it's really important that we begin this process and begin to show up for ourselves in new, and healthier ways. The, the second thing I want to discuss is the impact of depression on our physical health. This can look like low motivation, poor food choices, high rates of uh, chronic illness due to self-neglect. And so often when we're depressed, we put our own needs on the back burner. So that's a chronic sign of depression that shows up a lot of times cross-culturally. South Asian, white, Hispanic, black, oftentimes that can be something that is actually happening. You know, people cross-culturally won't take care of their physical health. But if you add in the layer of the black experience, excuse me, when you add the black experience to it, the black experience tells us that our bodies don't matter. What happens to our bodies don't, ma don't matter. Our bodies are just work tools and work products. And so if we're getting all these messages that our value and our humanity as black people doesn't matter, therefore we don't have to take care of and pay attention to ourselves, that will magnify whatever depression, depression symptoms we are having. This will make things a lot worse for us because we're trained as black people to treat ourselves in the spirit of self-neglect. And so if that's an overarching theme for us as black folks, then if you add on depression, anxiety, and, and you know, if you're working through some intergenerational trauma issues, then that just magnifies things and makes things so much more worse and intense. The third thing I wanted to talk about is how depression impacts our mental health, leading to isolation, 
unbalanced emotions, anger and frustration. This is very common in our community in general because as black people, we've suppressed a lot and we've repressed a lot. We're not in touch with how we feel at all. And because we're not in touch with how we feel at all, we often have our emotions you know, bubble up in episodes of rage and anger that seem out of proportion to what happened. And sometimes people can't really understand what's going on there. And the reason that is, is because we don't know what's the source of what. So if we are constantly suppressing and pushing down our feelings and emotions, the things that need to be expressed never come out in a healthy way. So they'll come out in ways that are unexpected. Anger, frustration, irritability, temper, or being short-tempered. So these are things that can habitually come out and we see recurring in our community towards each other, leading to some of the other the other escalations of violence we may see in our households in our in, in our surrounding environments. Also another key important thing about depression is isolation. A lot of times when people are depressed, they want to isolate and withdraw. And you know, as black women, we're kind of taught that we have to put on a mask of we're happy, we're everything's fine, we look good, we look pretty, things like that. But in reality, we may want to not connect, not be around. We have trouble, you know, being around people and really putting our best self forward because we don't have that emotional energy. And oftentimes when we don't have that emotional energy to connect, it's going to be really hard for us to want to be around other people. And we may begin to isolate and we may begin to let some of our relationships go and not tend to them the way we would have in the past. And so it's very key um, that as we start to care and take care of ourselves, notice what's happening with the way that you engage with other people. Have you been beginning to isolate? Have you been beginning to, you know, withdraw from relationships and social connections that were once very important for you? Are you having, you know, have you always had a problem with anger or your temper? Or have has it been a sudden shift for you? Or suddenly these are things that are currently plaguing you and it seems out of balance for you or people maybe somebody has mentioned that they've noticed a shift in this and you're kind of trying to figure out what's going on the fourth category i wanted to mention is how depression impacts the relationship we have with ourselves this includes low self-esteem poor relationship with our bodies hygiene and self-care and so often as black women because we're undervalued in society we may have a low level of not low level we may we have an unconscious program running already in our head that says that we have less value and so then that's just blanket full stop that's the message we receive as black women and then you add on the layer of depression that could be begin to also take away from whatever belief we had in ourselves and that will also contribute to our belief about whether we should care for ourselves or not also you know, because our relationship with this world is so multi-layered as black women, we have how our bodies are viewed in society, how the body of a black woman is perceived, you know, the, all these Eurocentric um, concepts that were, you know, forced down our throat that, that taught us how we show up in our bodies as black women is not valuable and needs to be changed or just something's wrong about it or we're too fat or we're too, you know, basically it usually goes towards fat phobia. You know, we're too fat. We have too much belly, too much breast, too much hips, too much thighs. We're too dark. We're, we're not this. We're not that. Whatever the case may be, we're just not right in our bodies as black women, regardless of how they show up. And so you, we all, all of us, whether we have a, a mental health diagnosis, an emotional imbalance, depression, anxiety, whether we know about it or not, all black women have these internalized concepts operating on a subconscious level. And then if you add into something like depression or anxiety or intergenerational trauma, then those things may show up how we look at ourselves in the mirror, how we feel about our bodies. We may be actively hating our bodies. All those are signs of mental health imbalances. And also sometimes when we're, you know, in a depressed state, we're not doing well emotionally, we don't want to care for ourselves. Our energy is low. We're not taking care of our hair. We're not bathing. We're not doing these things, you know, doing, you know, personal hygiene things. And this is not meant to shame anyone. 
it happens a lot of people have these things happen where they get depressed and they just don't wash their hair for months sometimes they don't bathe for months they just take sponge baths you know they don't wash their clothes the way they used to this is all because things are going on with your mental health your emotional health and you just need support number five is how depression impacts all of our relationships and the world this includes disconnection from others, neediness, and poor relationship choices. So this kind of ties into what we were saying earlier about isolation, but also sometimes when people are depressed, they really sometimes their emotions are blunted and they really can't emotionally take in what they're receiving from another because the depression kind of fogs you up mentally and warps, excuse me, and warps how you see other people and how you feel like you're perceived by other people. You may feel like no one could possibly love me because of the, the state I'm in. No one could possibly care about me because of the state I'm in. And that's depression because it affects your whole perspective on your life and it makes you feel less valuable and less worthy. And of course, always adding into, that's also the subconscious cultural messaging that we received as black women and the reason I say it's subconscious is that yeah you see it said overtly but this is centuries and centuries and centuries of embedded knowledge that's been embedded in our genes in our DNA in our tissue and our ancestral memory of our, our lack of value and worth so this is why this process is so layered also on the flip side another aspect is you know neediness really feeling like you know, you want something from somebody else with thinking that that will help to ease the pain that we feel in our soul. That will help to ease the nervousness we feel in our soul. And, you know, that, that connection with others, that's what th will be the thing that we need to heal us and make us feel better. But that is not what is going to bring our true healing. True healing will be brought about through connection with self. So it's really important that we begin to look at all this and then also be understand how our depression may have played into our relationship choices. It may, it played into how we view other people and how we make excuses for what happens and we allow other people to cross our boundaries. Because a lot of people, a lot of black women have stayed in relationships longer than they should have because they were depressed and they just couldn't have the energy. They didn't feel like they were valuable enough for a myriad of other reasons. And that depression impact impacted their relationship choices and how they connect with, with people, how they connected with jobs, how they, you know, related to toxic family members, how they stayed in friendships that were cross boundaries or they were engaging in, um, caretaking um many you know romantic relationships and this is something that i can talk about a little bit more so if if this um topic of how depression impacts our relationship is something you'd like me to go in further then leave me a comment uh, down below and please you know subscribe to the channel so we can continue this conversation even further because i do want to hear what everyone has to say to me about this because any one of these topics i can um go into further but if the what I was saying as far as way depression impacts our relationships. If y'all would like me to make another video about that, I definitely wouldn't mind. So subscribe, comment, and let me know your thoughts. And the sixth thing I would like to say is, um, as it pertains to depression, is how depression can be healed through developing a loving and kind reparenting relationship with ourselves. So this is done by becoming aware of our emotions, being with our uncomfortable emotions and giving ourselves loving messages of tenderness and affirmation. As black women, this idea of giving ourselves messages of tenderness, healing and affirmation is totally new for us. This is not something that anybody has ever told us. This is not something that we ever thought we deserved. And we've internalized hundreds of years of messaging that told us we didn't have any value and our aunties got this message and our daddies got these message but definitely the, we all did but as black women we know basically every woman in our in our lives has received this message and 
enacted this message on their own body and also reinforced it with ours in our bodies which is complex and I don't want to use the word it was done maliciously but they were they were doing it in a very unconscious way because it's so common and, pre and prevalent around them so and I know our relationships and our families are very complicated and sometimes things were done to us maliciously but it's so pervasive in our community <clears throat> excuse me it's so pervasive in our communities that um, it's a widespread effect even though we experience it on an individual level it's part of a systemic issue based on our cultural trauma and the abuse we experienced so so that's why it's really important that we begin to undo a lot of the messages that we were given regarding our value and worth as black women and so that's why the reparenting process treating ourselves with love and compassion are so important because you know we know what's happened to us we know what's happened to our loved ones we know what's happened to our mothers and our fathers and our aunties and our grandmas and our cousins and a lot of the women folk uh in our lives we know that they've in ingested a lot of toxic messages that told them that their value was not there that their they didn't their needs didn't matter everything else needed to go on the back burner and that nothing else mattered but what how they can serve other people and you know you know a lot of times in their bodies that built up a lot of anger and rage and because it built up so much anger and rage they started you know projecting that onto us and so we have been again continuing cycles we could have been very harmed by that but you know we can't um wait for our healing to begin when somebody else tells us sorry when everybody says when somebody else says you know i understand now we can't wait for that what we have to do is give ourselves the loving messages we never gave we never received we have to become our own kind loving wise parent we have to begin to care for ourselves and love ourselves and to sit with ourselves daily and you know send ourselves loving messages and this is not done in a you know quick fast hodgepodge type of way this is done by slowing down by being deliberate by sitting with ourselves and beginning to you to view ourselves with love and compassion i feel that when a black woman begins to treat herself with love and compassion that is the most revelatory thing that they can do because that goes against all the messaging we have received under the system of white supremacy patriarchy and sexism and misogyny that we are valuable that we are worth it our worth is not going to come by being a different skin color or body type our birth is our worth is not tied to our hair color or our makeup or our socioeconomic status our worth is in our worth is tied to our inherent dignity as a human being and as a black woman so I could go on on about this for very for a very long time and one of the things I teach in my classes is how to help black women begin to build a loving relationship with themselves through self self compassion somatic practices and meditation among other things and so I want to get your feedback on how you feel about this how do you feel about what was shared did it make you think I want to just really destigmatize depression and anxiety and intergenerational trauma among black women and let you know that anything that you're experiencing now you're not alone anything that you're experiencing now you're not alone there are millions of people on in this country and across this planet who look like you who are going through something similar or the same thing and we are all in this recovery process together so please leave me your comments let me know what's going on did you find the video interesting if you need some further elaboration on anything i said um do you have any thoughts ideas and topics you'd like me to discuss let me know how you felt about this i want us to begin the conversation because it's really important that we as black women begin to take care of ourselves we have to be there for ourselves in the way no one was before and it's really 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 important that we begin to do this for many reasons but particularly because when black women don't take care of themselves they die quicker i know that kind of took a sharp right turn there 
to something grim, but I see it every day in my clinical work. You know, when we don't take care of ourselves, we get sick. And a lot of black women are sick, physically ill, and really, really struggling right now due to stress, anxiety, and depression, and embodied in intergenerational trauma. All these things live in our body, and if we don't take care of them, they make us ill, and they make us sick, and they shorten our lives, and I don't want that for us. That really has been something I've been seeing this week, and it really makes my heart very, very sad. I really don't want that for us. I want us to live long, healthy, happy lives, because that's what we deserve, because we've given so much to the world, and we've been taking advantage of for centuries. So I want us to have the freedom and the happiness and the liberation that our aunties and our cousins and our grandmas and our great grandmas and our great great grandmothers couldn't have because we were being worked to death and burdened with everybody else's responsibilities. Our role as black women is not to be responsible for everybody else, it's to love ourselves and treat ourselves with dignity and respect and healing, love and compassion. So I'm going to check my notes to make sure I covered everything. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to hear about more of what I had to say, subscribe to the channel. The channel's brand new, but I'm not. I've been doing this work for a long time, and it's what I love and what I'm excited about, and I'm looking forward to sh sharing and creating more videos about depression, intergenerational trauma, healing through self-compassion, somatic practices, meditation. That's what we'll be discussing here. And all these practices will be geared towards helping black women heal and recover their mental health process from this toxic soup that we've all were brought up in. So please subscribe to subscribe to the channel. In the course in the in the description below, I'll have a couple of links to um, my book, Master Your Depression, A Black Woman's Guide to Emotional Wellness, an upcoming six week e course that is an introduction to somatic healing for black women. Excuse me. And if you'd like to join my email list, you can get a free download of a PDF on Black Female Embodiment Practices for Black Female Embodiment for Black Women. So all of those will be linked in the course, in the description, I want to say course description, will link below in the description box. And, you know, please join our community. My goal is to reach 1 million Black women on planet Earth. So if you know a Black woman you think would benefit from this, Please share this with them. I really want us to meet, I want us to reach each other and heal each other and help each other, you know, enjoy this one life that we have. Okay, so my name is Sonia Ross and I'm signing off and I look forward to connecting with you in the future. Bye.